When we think of the Civil War, we think of men fighting with rifles, cannons, and horses. However, as Union and Confederate soldiers left home for war, Manny brought along family pets and even adopted stray animals. On other occasions, wild animals such as squirrels, raccoons, bears, badgers, eagles, wildcats, and even a camel were taken with them. These animals were not only comfort and entertainment to lonely and bored soldiers in camp and on marches, but they took on semi-official roles as mascots. They accompanied the men into battle and suffered alongside their regiments. One story tells about Union troops captured Company B of the 2nd Kentucky Regiment at the Battle of Fort Donaldson, Tennessee. Not only did they capture the men, but they also detained the company's canine mascot named Frank. The men and the dog were imprisoned for six months at Indiana's Camp Morton. After said time, they were exchanged for Union prisoners of war. Most of these pets became the unofficial mascots and were readily accepted by superiors of both sides. The officers understood the bond as well as the remarkable power that the animals had to unite a unit or regiment. Confederate General Lee had a chicken that gave him an egg every day. The soldiers became stressed when the chicken got lost at Gettysburg. They wouldn't leave until the chicken was found. Even President Lincoln wasn't immune to the solace provided by animals during the war. He was known to have many dogs, goats, pigs, and cats. Mary Todd Lincoln was once asked if her husband had any hobbies, and she simply replied, cats. One of the most famous mascots was a bald eagle named Old Abe. Lieutenant James McGuire of the newly formed Company C of the 8th Wisconsin Regiment received permission from his commanding officer, Captain John E. Perkins, to purchase an eagle from a Wisconsin couple who had bought it from a local tribe. The men loved the eagle so much they changed their nickname from Eau Claire Badgers to the Eau Claire Eagles. Captain Perkins named the newest mascot Old Abe in honor of President Lincoln. As the men obtained intensive training on weaponry and various formations, Old Abe was assigned to the color guard where he received his new perch that consisted of a shield-shaped plate with a crossbar that he could roost on. The plate was decorated with stars and stripes and sat atop a five-foot-long pole which was carried with the men into battle. As the men and Old Abe boarded a train bound for the front line, they stopped over in Chicago. The crowds in the newspapers were enamored by Old Abe. The men regarded the eagle as more important than the Eau Claire Eagles themselves. Despite the fanfare, the regiment pressed on to St. Louis. There they met southern sympathizers that taunted the men with cries of Yankee Crow and Wild Goose. The noise agitated Old Abe and he briefly broke free, which caused havoc within the ranks of the men as they chased after him. Old Abe was almost killed twice. At the Battle of Corinth in Mississippi, a mini-ball cut the leather cord connecting him to his perch. As he flew down the Union lines of the battlefield, Confederates tried to shoot at him. Confederate General Sterling Price offered a bounty to his men and stated he would rather see the eagle die than the whole regiment disappear. After this incident, someone clipped the tail and wing feathers to prevent him from flying away again. This outraged David McLean, who was his bearer, and resigned his post. Old Abe's other near miss occurred during the Siege of Vicksburg in 1863. The Confederate soldier's mini-ball grazed his neck and chest, taking off the feathers and damaging his left wing. By the summer of 1864, the men decided that Old Abe had seen enough of war. The regiment decided to give him to the state of Wisconsin. At that time, he became a war relic, and thousands of people came to see him in his new home at the state capitol. He also appeared at fundraising events where he autographed photos of himself by punching a hole in them with his beak. The famous showman P.T. Barnum offered to buy the eagle for $20,000, but the state refused. In February of 1881, a fire broke out in the capital and Old Abe inhaled a large amount of smoke. He died one month later after being held by his caretaker. Veterans throughout Wisconsin volunteered to be the pallbearer at his funeral. 
For years, crowds came to see Old Abe's preserved body in the rotunda of the Capitol building, but a fire in 1904 destroyed his remains forever. Old Abe was one of the lucky mascots. Many of them lost their lives in battle. After the Battle of Gettysburg, a small dog was seen limping on three legs through the dead. It was thought to have been with the 1st Maryland Regiment. Union Brigadier General Thomas Kane once wrote, He licked someone's hand after being perfectly riddled with bullets. Regarding him as the only Christian-minded being on either side, I ordered him to be honorably buried. Other mascots died trying to protect their companies. The Baltimore American reported a scene from the Battle of Antietam. Upon the dead body was found to be a large black dog, dead also from the same chance shot which had struck him while stretched upon his master's corpse caressingly, his forepaws across the man's breast. One of the more famous Civil War dogs was none other than Jack. He had portraits that were painted of him that still hang today. Even a fictionalized movie gave an account of his life. But his actual story is quite intriguing. Jack was a stray who wandered into a Pittsburgh firehouse through his tenacity and eventually worked his way into the hearts of the firefighters. Jack joined them as they enlisted as a unit for the war. He marched with the troops into battle and would stand at the end of the firing line barking furiously at the opposing troops. He served for over three years, including six months in a Confederate prison camp where he gave great comfort to Union soldiers. He was wounded a number of times and finally disappeared in December of 1864 near Frederick, Maryland. Jack was never found, but it is thought that he was probably killed for his expensive silver collar that his soldiers awarded him. Sally has another remarkable story as the mascot of the 11th Pennsylvania Volunteers from around Westchester, Pennsylvania. She was given to the regiment captain as a four or five week old pup. She was named after one of the local beauties. Sally trained with the men responding to reveille and roll calls with great discipline. She was friendly to her troops and fearless in battle. Her combat record was remarkable. She served for nearly the duration of the war, receiving wounds, including a severe shoulder wound that did not deter her from her duty. A surgeon was unsuccessful in removing the fired ball in her shoulder, but later it emerged, working itself to the surface. Sally returned to duty, tearing the seat out of the pants of a soldier who was trying to flee the battle. After the battles, including Gettysburg, Sally would lick the hands and faces of the wounded and then guard the dead until their comrades would come for them. It was said that during a review of the troops in Fredericksburg, Virginia, Abraham Lincoln even doffed his stovepipe hat to Sally as she passed, which her fellow troops loved immensely. But like most war stories, there was no happy ending. In February of 1865, two months before the war's end, Sally was killed in combat at Petersburg. While the battle raged on around them, her regiment took on the task of burying her on the battlefield. The affection that these troops had for Sally was so strong that when they erected a regimental monument at Gettysburg Battlefield in 1890, they chose to have a likeness of Sally watchfully laying at the foot of the larger monument. In 1910, there was a reunion at the battlefield, and the group photo was shot so that there was enough space for Sally to be among them. Thanks for watching today's episode on Civil War Dogs and Animals. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit of something. If you enjoy these types of videos, please check out some of the other ones that I've done. How about these in the links?